Well, then there's one last area. Because God is pro-work, he's against indolence and sloth and entitlements and oppression of the poor by the rich. Believers are to expose the grave errors of American gambling. Do you know why America gambles? Because we're materialistic to the core. We believe that money is something that we should long for. In fact, many people long to be rich. And, and they long even at their own personal harm. The average lottery ticket buyer is a $13,000 a year income family unit, and they spend 10% of their income on this hopelessness of trying to be rich. We have become a nation selling hope for money from people who can't afford to buy it, but are offered hope that is unreal, impossible, and destructive. And lotteries and gambling are like drug addiction and drunkenness. They offer what only God can give freely. In America, it's fair to say we're wild about gambling. In 1962, the year I got saved when I was six years old, there were $2 billion in betting going on. By the year 2010, the number had grown to $866 billion, and now our country is poised to hit the staggering trillion dollar a year mark in wagers. And these bets take place in 400 casinos nationally, and I'm sure it's far more now. That's off the NPR. Vast lotteries embraced by most state governments as a revenue godsend at horse tracks, dog tracks, sporting events, you know, the hockey game, whatever, the super hockey game that's today or whatever it is. I'm sure people are going to be betting on that thing today, too. And imagine it, if Americans spent $60 billion this last year on amusement parks, movies, and live performances, they'll spend $1 trillion dollars. 160 times, or 16 times as much, 16 times as much gambling as they do on all live entertainment. It's unbelievable, the waste. Well, what do we do about it? Well, as believers, the reason why we are going along with this is we have bad eyes. We, we need to repent of the bad eye disease. Jesus gives one of the most amazing tests in life. In fact, turn to uh, Matthew 6 with me. I want to show you something that's fascinating. Jesus said, you want to have my heart of compassion? You want, to, you want to serve me in the world? You need to check your eyes and just do a quick test. Jesus says, I want you to measure what looks most precious to you. First, look at all the treasures on earth. Think of, of everything you could possibly have. And then look up at the treasures of heaven and compare in your mind which one looks better to you. Heaven? Earth. For most people to go, hmm, that's a long ways away. Ah, I can really, I can really get, you know, sink my teeth into these treasures. That seems so far away and long ago. You know, it's just, if earth, Jesus said, is more beautiful than heaven, your eyes are bad. Because when we got saved, Acts 26, 18 says he opened our eyes. He, he changed the way we see things. That's a sign of salvation. So he said, you're supposed to see heaven as better by far than earth. And if you see earth as better than heaven, your eyes are sick. So basically, it goes like this in, in Matthew 6, 19. Look what Jesus says. Don't lay up your treasures on earth. Moth and rust destroy. Thieves break in and steal. Lay up your treasures in heaven, verse 20. Because where your treasure is, your heart's going to be. Then he gets into verse 22 and 23, and most people think, oh, he changed channels. It's kind of like he, he hit the remote, now he's on a different subject. He's not. He's continuing to talk about money. And he says, the lamp of the body is the eye. If your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. If your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If the light that's in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Verse 24, because no one can serve two masters. Either will hate the one and love the other and be loyal to one and despise the other. Now look at this. You can't serve God and mammon. That's what he's talking about. And the bad eyes, our eyes, well, here's the bottom line. If you are emotionally drawn more to material things than by Christ, then pray that God will give you a good eye and heal you from the spiritual blindness of the bad eye disease. And you say, that is so un-American. Oh, it gets worse. You know what Paul says in 1 Timothy 6, 9, and 10? Believers need to understand that God said it is wrong to want to be rich. 
it's wrong to desire to be rich. There is an entire, in fact, the fastest growing segment of Christianity is the false prosperity. We have an outlet for it in this town. The false gospel of prosperity, that God wants you rich. He doesn't. God said, and you can read in 1 Timothy 6, 9, and 10, he says, I want you to be careful. And this is what he says, those who desire to be rich will fall into temptations and snares and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which will drown them in destruction and perdition. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, from which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You know what the Lord says? Desiring To be rich is like being suicidal spiritually. And yet, there are people that fill the airwaves 24 hours a day saying, God wants you to be rich. Whatever God wants, he's already given us, and we are rich there. But those purveyors of false hope are saying, he wants you rich here. And when you desire and I desire to be rich, we want the poor I mean, the richer you are, the further out the gates are. You don't want them near. They aren't comfortable to have around. But the poor people gladly and joyfully came to Christ because he laid aside his riches for the purpose of us, and aren't we thankful? And finally, as believers, we need to ask for Christ's compassion. I mean, Jesus said this, when Jesus saw the poor and the needy and the hungry, it says in Matthew 9, 36, he was moved with compassion. And when John, the one that was right there and and saw Christ's heart because he was the closest apostle to Christ, when John wrote at the end of his life in 1 John 3, 17, he says, if you have this world's goods and you see your brother in need and you shut your heart from him, how can Christ dwell in your heart, John said. You see, the cure for materialism is, is to renounce it and say, wanting money is kind of like being a recovering alcoholic and saying, yeah, I'll tend the bar. It's like if, if you're just recovering from being a thief, work in the vault of the bank, you know, count the money and, and total. If, if you're just recovering from uh, being addicted to chocolate, don't work in a candy store. God says, money is dangerous. We're wired for materialism and don't desire to be rich. It's wrong. Ask for Christ's compassion over the poor and the needy and over the helpless and those that are most in need of seeing his love.